This is a statistical analysis of Hill Open Shoreleg Cast and Figure 8 Cast. Authors have nothing to disclose. The cast is a cylindrical shaped fixation device, and it has a better fixation power than the splint, but causes more complications and discomfort. As the short term complications, it may occur the various symptoms, including the edema by the pressure of fixed site, temporary paralysis. As the delayed complications, it may occur the heel sores, nerve damage, and if the pressure is too severe, it is necessary to take measures such as making a window. We think that this complication and discomfort of the cast can be reduced by opening the heel, and so we apply the open heel cast to patients with various trauma and diseases in the foot and ankle joint, and reporting the clinical results and the technique. It was carried out for 508 cases of trauma and disease patients in the foot and ankle joint site from November 2014 to July 2017. The splint was applied for post-operative or conservative treatment and the open heel cast was applied 4 to 7 days after surgery and after edema was decreased. In case of the surgical patients, the open heel cast was performed after checking whether the surgical incision site was applied to a skin tape or skin bond. The various trauma and disease groups has been applied such as foot and ankle joint fractures, chronic ankle instability, achilles tendon rupture. The heel open cast were performed in two methods, C-type and K-type. Firstly, C-type is the method that completely exposed heel posteriorly in order to expose the achilles tendon attachment part of the calcaneus and calcaneus posterior superior aspect. The bottom space of the foot is wrapped from the metatarsophalangeal joint to the medial part of the medial arch and the lower leg is wrapped from the protruding part of the middle one-third to the half of the lower leg. The foot part of the heel and the distal side of the achilles tendon are fully to be exposed. A slight motion on the calcaneus can provide comfort during walking, but there is this the advantage that foot itself can be a fine posterior dislocation. Therefore, it does not apply in cases of pilum fracture, posterior malleolar fracture, where the posterior stability of the foot is important, and lateral malleolar fracture that performing conservative treatment. And except for that, it can be applied to most other foot and ankle diseases and trauma patients. K-type was applied patients, those who including lateral posterior malleolar fracture and lateral malleolar fracture that perform conservative treatment. The bottom surface of the fixation is the same as the C-type, but the lower leg part is wrapped from the internal external protuberance just inferior of the ankle joint and from the posterior of the calcaneus to the middle one-third to the half of the lower leg. It provides additional stability to the posterior of the calcaneus and achilles tendon attachment part. These are the materials for making the open heel short leg cast. A 1 meter long elastic sleeve is cut into two pieces, each 60 centimeters and 40 centimeters long. The longer sleeve is applied on the distal portion of the lower leg and the shorter sleeve on the foot. The sleeve is applied on two layers. These patient underwent surgery for bimalleolar ankle fracture. Though there is no posterior malleolar fracture, in order to prevent posterior slippage of the foot, a K-type heel open cast which can stabilize the heel is applied. To apply the cast, including the insertion site of the Achilles tendon, the sleeve is covered distally to the bottom of the heel. After the short sleeve is put on the foot, while keeping the ankle in 90 degrees dorsiflexion, cotton is covered in two layers. On the proximal end, 
for modification of the margin, the cotton is covered a bit distally than the point where the open heel cast ends proximally. Open heel cast is applied proximally to the distal half or distal one-third of the lower leg. Some patients suffer from tibia anterior crest area pain due to impingement of the loosened cast after a decrease of edema and muscle wasting of the lower leg, thus twisting the cotton during the covering to make the tibia anterior crest area covered in four layers is needed, and molding the cast to a shape that the anterior compartment of the lower leg and medial surface of the tibia being flat is necessary. When covering the foot with cotton, it includes the portion where bunion and bunionet occur and the distal portion of the metatarsal phalangeal joint. To open up the foot dorsum, and make it into a quadrangular shape during appliance of the polyester cast, the cotton of the dorsum is torn. By starting the covering the polyester cast from the whole heel area, it progresses proximally. The proximal end is managed by folding the proximal sleeve and cotton before cast appliance to prevent the pain and skin problems that could occur by impingement of the polyester cast. The distal end of the lower leg is managed in the same fashion including the Achilles tendon insertion site. By palpating the medial and lateral malleolus, the margin of the cast fully covers them. The same procedure was recorded on the different view. When you manage the proximal margin, the assistant holds the cast during the procedure. You can see the modification of the sleeve and cotton during the polyester cast covering process. This video was taken in another different view during the covering process of the foot. While the assistant holds the cast, I modify the sleeve and cotton. The cast should be in shape to maintain the coverage of the mid portion of the medial longitudinal arch through the metatarsal phalangeal joint. Especially for the foot portion, I carefully cover it without tension since over tightening of the cast can cause compression of the medial and lateral forefoot leading to pain and discomfort.
Loosening of the cast after decrement of the edema and muscle sparing can cause pain on the anterior aspect of the lower leg. In order to prevent such problems, flattening the tibial medial surface and the anterior compartment to make a free space between the tibial crest and the cast is essential. The medial margin of the Achilles tendon is molded using the thinner and hypothenar muscles. The anterior, posterior, and superior aspect of the medial malleolus is molded in the same fashion. The anterior lateral concave side of the Achilles tendon and the anterior, posterior, and proximal portion of the lateral malleolus should be molded to the anatomical shape using the thinner and hypothenar muscles. From the foot flat to view, you can see the cast covering the distal portion of the metatarsophalangeal joint. To allow passive and active motion of the toes, a quadrangular shape is made on the foot dorsum. During molding, the index fingers of the both hands is pushed inside the cast to the dorsal medial surface of the first metatarsophalangeal joint and the dorsal lateral surface of the fifth metatarsophalangeal joint to make a free space. Without a free space, pressure is to the toes during the movement can cause pain, limiting passive and active toe exercise. The posterior view of the foot shows that to achieve stability, cast should be molded along both medial and lateral margin of the Achilles tendon. You can see the active and passive motion of the toes. This procedure making a C-type open heel cast. Most of the procedure is same as K-type though the difference is covering the most prominent portion of the medial and lateral malleolus and exposing the posterior superior portion of the calcaneus. C-type can be used for all foot and ankle fractures, except pilum fractures, posterior malleolar fracture, lateral malleolar fracture undergoing conservative treatment, and toe fracture. To assess the stability, the degree of the change in active plantar and dorsiflexion, passive foot inversion inversion, and abduction adduction motion range was measured. If the vast discomfort score at the time of wearing short leg splint applied immediately after the surgery or trauma is 10, the vast discomfort score of the open heel cast was examined. If there were situation to use short leg cast in the future, it was investigated that the patient's idea of whether to reselect the open heel cast method. In all cases, it was measured that the range of active plantar and dorsiflexion was within 5 degrees, the range of passive foot inversion inversion was within 5 degrees, the foot motion range of abduction adduction is 0 degrees, and it remains stable until removal of the cast without damaging the skin and soft tissue. When the score of the short leg splint is to 10, the vast discomfort scores of the open heel cast that patient feels respectively were 0 to 5, with an average of 2.6, and all patients answer that they will use open heel cast if they need cast in the future. In particular, the 22 cases among the foot and ankle joint fracture were performed, the conservative treatment under heel open cast, and a successful bony union was obtained. This is the case of conservative treatment. The heel open cast of C-type was applied to patient who have metatarsal base fracture in the fifth on the left side. This is an initial x-ray when the patient visited. After applying the heel open cast of C-type, the conservative treatment were performed. This is six weeks after cast fixation. The fracture site remained relatively stable and the cast was removed on the very day. This shows that successful union was obtained nine weeks after injury. Ankle position can be applied differently depending on the patient's condition and need. Patients who are capable of early weight bearing can feel comfortable when they walk by applying about 5 to 10 degrees of dorsiflexion. The plantar is wrapped to the metatarsophalangeal joint, but the dorsum of the foot has been completely exposed up to the muscle site of the metatarsophalangeal joint. It is helpful in active and passive motion of the toes by making a quadrangular shaped opening when seen on the anterior part of the foot. Conclusion Open heel cast showed radiographic stability and clinical satisfactory results. 
and remained stable until before removal without damaging the skin or soft tissue. Above all, patients were able to maintain a comfortable cast. If stability is verified by long-term studies in the various patient groups and in many cases, it can be considered to be a good method that can alternative to existing short leg cast. This is a girl with ankle sprain and it is third day after applying heel open cast. We can see that there is no discomfort or pain in walking or living after applying the cast. Thank you for your attention.